Hey guys, this is Goku and today we're gonna be talking about a very important tournament plays which are the steel and the re-steel. You will learn why they are absolutely crucial in tournaments and how you should use them. So, let's get right into it. Steel is a tournament play you make from late positions when you race with a junk hand only to try and pick up the blinds and antis. It's a very effective and profitable play when done properly. In tournaments the blinds and antis go up so quickly that you simply cannot wait only for premium hands because you'll get blinded out. In order to maintain your stack, you have to utilize the steel. What factors should you consider when trying to steal the blinds? Definitely your position is the most important, as from early positions the steel just won't be very successful. The later your position is, the more likely it is that the steel will work. You will have the most success from the cutoff and the bottom. Another thing you should consider when stealing is who are the players on the blinds, and especially the big blind. Does he defend his blind often, or does he fold it unless he picks up a premium hand? If he's loose aggressive, stealing his blind becomes a bad play as he'll defend it or 3-bet most of the time. Best players to steal the blind from are tight players, and the tighter they are, the more profitable the steal will be. What's also important is your image on the table. If your opponents have seen you play loosely and steal blinds often, they'll be more likely to call you, so maybe you should wait for a premium hand to raise. On the other hand, if they think you're a nit, meaning a very tight player, you can get away with stealing more, as they'll fear you finally picked up aces. You can utilize steal the most when you have a big stack and you're stealing from short stacks, because they won't be able to do anything about it, unless they pick up a premium hand, and that will not happen too often. The best moment to destroy the short stacks with your big stack by stealing lots of hands is on the bubble, or close to it, because they just want to get to the money and they likely fold more than 95% of their hands. Let's look at an example of the steal. The blinds are 1 and 2k with 300 anti, which means there is 5.7k in the pot before the cards are dealt. Everyone falls to you on the cutoff. You raise with 7 deuce off to 4300. Your steal only has to work more than 43% of the time to be profitable. We've covered the steal, so now let's talk about the re-steal. If you know that a specific opponent is stealing a lot, you may counter that with a re-steal. Again, the less players there are left to act in the hand, the better. Most of re-steals happen from the button and the blinds. In general, when re-stealing, you want to make sure you have good read on your opponent, that is, based on your observations, you think it's very likely that he is stealing in this specific spot. Let's go back to our example. You raise with 7 deuce off to 4.3k and the player on the big blind, who is a very tight player, decides to use his image and make a re-steal and hit 3 bets to 10,500. You obviously can't call with 7 deuce off and so you fold and he wins a nice pot. What is worth to mention is that his re-steal only has to work a little over 51% of the time to show profit, and even if you have an actual hand 
and miss the flop, he'll be able to pick up the pot with a continuation bet a lot of the time. And that's all just using his very tight image. Okay, so now you know that the steal is a tournament play you make from late positions when you have a junk hand and are raising only to steal the blinds and ampies. You know that it's crucial to use as it helps you maintain your stack size. You've learned that it is best to steal from late positions like the cutoff or the button and that the tighter the blinds are, the more profitable the steal becomes. You know that you should only steal from players who do not defend their blinds too often and that you should never try and steal blinds from loose aggressive players. You've also learned that when you have a big stack you can really abuse the short stacks with your steal and when it is close to the bubble you can raise pretty much every single hand against short stacks and they won't be able to do anything about it and you'll just be able to build an even bigger stack. And lastly, you've learned that a great way to counter players who are stealing too much is the re-steal. Thanks so much for watching and wow, you are really quite a player right now. Keep it up man. If you like this lesson, please share it with your friends, click the like button and subscribe for more future videos. Now go play poker! Seriously, go! You can have all the fear you want, but if you don't practice, you will not improve much. This course gives you everything you need to know to beat the small stakes games, but it doesn't give you practice. You absolutely have to play at least a couple hundred of hands after every lesson if you want to improve your game. I'm sure you're gonna have a ball. So, see you in the next lesson.